What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we're gonna to be talking about weaponized incompetence, a narcissist's favorite tool to get out of doing things, but pretending to be incompetent to make you take on more work. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a self-aware narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. So boom, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Yeah, weaponized incompetence, playing the fool, playing dumb, playing stupid um, is a way a lot of narcissists get out of doing things. A lot of way a lot of narcissistic people get you to take on more work, get you to take on more chores around the house, get you to do more, to put in more effort and whatnot. An easy example of this, right? I mean, if you look it up on Google, it says, uh, weaponized incompetence is when someone knowingly or unknowingly demonstrates an inability to perform or master certain tasks, thereby leading others to take on more work. This could happen at, if you're dealing with a narcissist at work or at home that you're married to or whatever. They knowingly or unknowingly. So sometimes they might be doing it unintentionally, but they're still doing it. You know, they, it's just like pretending to not know how to do something at home. It's just like, let's just say you're at home, right? You seen look they li like before y'all before y'all got married they live by themselves you live by yourself now y'all live together so you taking on the task of now like I, let's just say something simple as this, like washing clothes or whatever which is not simple sorry y'all um <clears throat> like you you've taken on the task of washing clothes right now right and then you ask them like hey can you wash clothes today uh, I'm a little I'm a little behind on my task and things like that. And they, and they don't do it. And it's just like, you know what? You wash the clothes a little bit better. I, like, I don't know how to how much detergent to use. I don't know what setting is to, to, to wash the best clothes on. Like, I don't know how to wash it. And I, I don't know how to dry them correctly either. I, I feel like you do it better. I don't really know how to run the washing machine. I don't really know how to run the dishwasher. I don't really know how to change the kid's diaper. I don't really know how to drop them off, the, the, to go through the line and drop them off at school. I don't really know how to pick up the groceries. You do it, you do it better. You know, you do it better than I do. Like, it would be a lot easier and it go a lot smoother if you did it, don't you think? Like, if you want it done right, you you would do you should do it, right? You know, I, when I do the clothes, I feel like you're going to judge me. So I feel like you should do it. You know, when I feel like I wash the dishes, they don't get clean. They, they, don't, they don't get as clean as you do. When I change our kids' diapers, you know, I put the diaper on backwards sometimes. I feel like you do it better. I don't want our kids walking around backwards. Do you? Do you want our kids walking around with a crusty butt or, you know what I mean, dirty clothes? And you know, messed up hair. I don't know how to cut my. I don't know how to do my my daughter's ponytail. I don't know how to put it in a ponytail. You do it better than I do. It's plain dumb, y'all. This is one of a narcissistic person's favorite things to do to mess with you. You ever hear the term merit? <clears throat> Weaponized incompetence. Um, a lot of times goes hand in hand with um, a married single parent. You know what that is? Married single parents are people who are married. Yeah, you married, you have a two-parent household, but you do everything. You do everything. And sometimes you do everything, including work, right? You do everything, including work. Like, you do everything. You're a married single parent. Like, you might as well, and you have more than, you have more kids because you're taking care of your adult partner as well. They're being, they're playing the role of a kid too. They leave their clothes beside the clothes. Like, it's just something super simple. Like they take their shoes off. You ask them to take their shoes off. Like can you kick your shoes off outside or in the in the mud room where they belong, so I don't have to remop the floor. Like, but but if I kick them off outside, I might my feet get cold on the cement for a little while. Don't you? Can't you just take them? Like, can't you just take them back outside when you go out there? Yo, they make your life harder. You know, like a lot of narcissists. Like I said, some of them don't do it on purpose. It's just it's just become a damn near an innate behavior like it's a learned behavior or whatever that they just continue to do but some of them absolutely do it on purpose they are lazy as hell they don't want to take on more work sometimes they feel like you should do it if y'all you know sometimes you get the the, the pseudo misogynistic narcissist that feel like you should take on traditional gender roles and you should do all the housework regardless of whether or not y'all you work you know y'all could be 50 50 on bills you could be you could make more money you can make more money than them. And they still won't do any house chores. They still won't cook because you do it better or you're supposed to do it. This is your role. You see what I'm saying? The, the patriarchy, I'm just telling you, it, it, it sets you up. 
And if you go into these relationship dynamics with people would knowingly go into relationships with, with people who do this, like they're going to keep doing it, right? They're not going to stop doing it. They are, they absolutely are not going to stop doing it. They're going to keep doing it over and over again until you like, un, until you get exhausted. And then you, and you, when you try, if you try to leave them, they're going to try to make you feel bad. Oh, you're going to leave me because for this, you really going to leave. You're going to walk all on our family because it is right. This is all it takes is some dirty clothes for us to end this beautiful marriage for us to end this beautiful situation. This is all it takes is this. Wow. This sucks. I thought we were, I thought our relationship was better than this. I thought we had more. I had, we thought, I thought we were stronger than this. They will play the fool. They will play stupid. They will play down. Yeah. They will play down their intellectual level just to get you to do more work, just to manipulate you into taking on more tasks, just to manipulate you into taking on them. Like some of them y'all will pretend like they don't know how to go. They don't know how to fill out a job application and y'all would do it for them. Hey babe, I know you're busy doing 15 other things that I pretend to not know how to do, but can you please fill out this job application for me? Can you please do this resume for me? You do it. You, you, you just do it better than I do. Now, is it true? Let me say this right here. Is it true that there's some things that you do better than them and some things that you like a certain, like done a certain type of way and that you would rather do it yourself? Yes. But that could be communicated to them. Like, Hey, look, I'll do this. Don't worry about this. This is on me. I like this done a certain type of way. Even I, I showed you how to do it. You tried your hardest and you don't, you, you can't, do, let me do this. Let me handle this. Okay. We're, let, we're in the same, like, we, we work, we're a team, but let me handle this. This is my role. Is there, are there things like that? Yes. There are tasks like that, that you might want done a specific way and you like to do that. So, um, and you like to do that type of stuff. So it makes sense that you like to do it. Right. But on the other side of things, when you're dealing with narcissistic people, they use this as a tool against you. They weaponize this against you. They don't stop because again, at the end of the day, why would they, why would they stop if they're getting benefits from it? Why would they? No narcissistic person is going to stop something that they feel like benefits them. Why would I, why would I stop something that I get a benefit from? So there's something that you have to consider as well. Like that's what the mindset of a lot of narcissistic people falls into. They feel like you deserve the treatments and the behaviors that you are getting because this is how their minds work. This is the roles that they feel like you felt that you've chosen, that you've picked. And I know, I know some of y'all like, I'll, I'll say this to y'all. If they do it in the dating stage, if they do this type of stuff, when you're dating, they're going to do it when you get engaged. If they're doing it while they're engaged, they're going to do it while you're married. They don't, why would they stop? You rewarded them by being engaged to them. You rewarded, to, re rewarded them by marrying them. Why would they stop? Why would they change a bad behavior that they feel like they're getting rewarded for? And the simplest way, I, the, the, the analogy that I like to use in this situation is the dog crapping on the dog crapping on the carpet, right? If you have a dog that you're training, and this is not trying to say you, tra you can train people, right? But this is an easy analogy to understand it. Like, if you have a dog that you're training, you just got this new little puppy. You like, you love this puppy. You like, I love you, I love you puppy. I love you puppy. And then snuggle, just snuggle. Like, you love the puppy, right? And, but you want the puppy to poop, poop outside in a certain area where you can scoop and discard it, right? But if you want that puppy to poop outside, and one day it poops in, like, the first time you get it, it poops inside. And instead of instead of like doing whatever training method you use to, to to let this dog know this is this is bad and they need to poop outside, instead of doing that, instead of doing that, you would give it a treat. You come home, there's poop on the carpet. The dog just freshly pooped on the carpet. You give it a treat, like, and you say, "Good, good doggy." Of course, now the dog thinks, "Oh, I poop inside. I get a treat." It keeps pooping. It gets more treats. Keeps pooping inside. Gets more treats. And you're like, "Why the hell do you keep pooping inside, dog? You're supposed to poop outside." Why would the dog go poop outside in the cold with his little paws in the, in the snow, with a little butt on the snow, or outside on the cold or wet ground or whatever, when it's getting treats for being inside, when it's getting rewarded for bad behavior inside? You're rewarding the puppy, you're rewarding the puppy in your real life, that, that toxic narcissistic spouse or coworker. You know, like I said, it could be a coworker that's pretending not to know how to do something. Then they, like, you feel like you'll get in trouble, like, you get a lazy ass narcissistic coworker, right? That pretends like you're on an assembly line. I've had this happen before. You're on an assembly line. 
in the assembly line, y'all know, works in the, as a unit, as a, it works in tandem. We all work together to get things done. The start of the assembly line to the back of the assembly line, right? Work together to get things done, correct? So at the end, like if one person messes up, the assembly line kind of goes down, right? So you get this one person who pretends like they don't know how to cut these boxes open or don't know how to fold this correctly, they don't know how to, don't know how to package this correctly. And you go over there and help them. Now they are intentionally not knowing how to pack stuff because they know if they get tired or they get behind, guess what happens? You'll come and help because you don't want to get in trouble. That's manipulation, y'all. They're doing it on purpose. Some people are doing it on purpose. Are there people who struggle to do certain tasks on an assembly line? Yes, there absolutely are. But like I said, there are people who do it on purpose to just to, to ball you up, to get you to get you stuck in the same spot with them. They will manipulate you. So this happens at work. This happens like this could be your boss. This could be your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, this whoever it is. This could be your parent. If you have a narcissistic parent, they can pretend like they don't know how to do something or they, they're incapable of doing something at home just to get you to come over and take care of them. I don't know how to work anymore. I can't work anymore. You're like, well, you, you 45. How you can't work no more? I'm 23. You 40, You can't work no more? You fully, you, you get, are you disabled? No. I just feel like, what? I'm just telling you. Again, y'all, if you have a partner at home that just refuses to get a job, but they've been sit, they they haven't worked in a decade. Why would they go get a job now if they've been getting taken care of for a decade? And this is not the stay at home parent. This is just a lazy one. This is just a lazy person who might have quit or got fired from a job, and then you started working super hard to pay all the bills, and now just, they fall into this routine where they don't they just stay at home all day. They're not a stay at home parent. They're just a stay at home bum, a living bum, you know. Weaponized incompetence is real. They pretend to not know how to do stuff to make your life harder, to become a bigger burden on you. And the more you allow it, the more it will continue, y'all. I'm just saying, it's hard to set these boundaries later on in a relationship, but it's possible to set them later on, to, on in certain relationships, but use discretion. If you try to set a boundary on a violent narcissist, they could get violent with you, you know? But anyways, y'all, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, if you don't know, my very first, this is like, you know, if you don't know, my very first workshop in-person workshop is going to be in washington dc on september the 14th me and my friend uh, neo are putting together a live in-person workshop live in-person event the link will be in the comment sections it'll be pinned at the top of the comment sections to register for the event it's a four hour intensive event in person limited seating limited space and whatnot in washington dc so stay like just check the comment section for the link um i'll have it this is just my first announcement of it. September 14th, y'all. Anyways, y'all, subscribe to the channel. And as always, Mr. Hillman is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Helps reach more people. And click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace.